Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose ah, my house. Here we are, folks. We're back. It's summertime in New York, and uh, I am sweating already. It's the thing. You you want it. You long for it. You yearn for it. You pine for it. You, er, that's all I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Long. You said long. Long, How pine, long? Uh, yearn, yeah. crave. Oh. Ooh, desire. You want it. You want it bad, and then it comes, and a little steamy. Uh, no, I don't want it. Give me the spring, what? give me the fall, give me the autumn, whatever that is. But I don't want the summer. I hate the heat. I love the summer. Indian hummer at summer, and I hate the heat. I love the heat. I went for a run today. I like the black top, and oh. uh, I want to just sweat. I like to sweat it out. I prefer now, the white top. I, to me, it's all about sky. I'm a sky ah, guy. The vodka. I'm all sky all the time. I'm sky sexual and bisexual. Sky when, it's, when it's blue, forget about it. I blue. love it. Oh, a blue sky. Blue is good. Blue's good. I and mean, the sky blue. is always blue. Isn't that weird to think about? The the, the storms come in. Uh huh. And we think the sky is black. The sky is gray. But the sky is blue. Those are clouds. Yeah, and all the leaves are brown. And the sky is gray. Hey, do you ever? Here's a great analogy because that's an uh, analogy for life. Our our minds, you know, the the contents of our mind is just the uh, the the uh, what do you call it? The um, soil. The the soil of our mind is the blue sky, and the thoughts are the clouds. Oh, the canvas. Yes, uh-huh. canvas. But I heard and... a great analogy for life. Okay, yeah. you ready for this? Shove I, this. I, in your I ass. got one after you, and you're I'm gonna, excited. You're gonna squirt. I love it. Squirt. You're gonna just shoot jizz. Yeah, it's finger be hard. So. Think of an analogy like this. All of the time in your life, think of it as like a rope going through your hands, right? You got a, there's a rope between your hands like this, and it's just pulling through. Yeah. If you hold it tight, you're going to get all ripped up. Ooh. You try to hold on to it, it's just ripping Ooh. against the hands. But if you hold it nice and loose, it kind of feels nice. I love it. I love it. You and might you, get a little callous, but it sure. feels kind of nice. But that's you got to build the callus. you got to have a little pain just to uh, be strong enough to get through the rest of the rope pull. But if you hold tight, <laughs> ripping those hands up. But what does that mean? How, you can't hold tight because it's slipping anyway. Well, people hold tight. But what do you? What does that mean? Like, try to hang on to your youth? People try to hold tight. They're like, I don't want to get old. I don't want to hurt my back. I don't want to go do this I thing. See, I, 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 got a, I got a show tonight. I, should I do the show? Should I not do the show? You're holding too tight. I got it. Like I Top like Gun, it. the first one. That's good. What did yes. you think of the second one? We never talked about it. You, I you thought, went and saw it. I thought it was fun. There was a lot of cheese on it. There's a lot, a lot of, of tropey. There's a ton of trope. Tropey cheese. Oh, oh the, the guy in the uh, the academy is a dick. The handsome guy, you butt heads with him. Whoa, uh-huh. he's super cocky. I've never seen that before. For no reason, by the way. They're no just reason. really shitty to Maverick. He's been in the military for like 30 years. The yeah. Military's all respect. They're just like, get out of here, you fucking homo, you, you piece of shit. You're old. By the way, he looks amazing. I'd blow him. Yeah. Secondly, the the, uh, the the nerdy guy, the peg leg, uh, Simon, whatever his name, he's got glasses. Glasses are like we're yes. all mean to him. He has glasses, right? That was so. He's the nerd. He's the dork. Get out of here. Yeah, the little there's like a little girl in there yeah. who's doing all the push-ups <laughs> and whatever. We did a whole episode on Joe and Ron, and if anyone wants to see, nobody watches it. Check it out. They hate Ron, and they hate me. Also, a very vague villain. By the way, yeah, well, you, you got to go vague. You got to go because you got to sell that puppy overseas. Yeah, and if you put in Russia, they'll they'll nuke us. They're like they're trying to bomb us with a jet plane. By the way, it's like a space movie at the beginning. Uh, what? It? He feels very spacey. He's Kevin, Kevin? Spacey. <laughs> he's, a, he's in the stealth plane, K-Pax. rocket ship. He's wearing a, a, a helmet. Oh, he's right. All like, and then he crashes. They steal the scene from Kill Bill. It's just a scene from Kill Bill. By the way. When he walks in the diner and he's like, "Can I get oh, a water?" That's right. I mean, that's directly in Kill Bill. And then the whole plot is Star Wars. Oh, They're like, "We got to swing father. down into this valley and come up and shoot right. this one bomb. It'll blow everything up." That's uh, so true. It's <laughs> the plot of Star Wars. A little kid will in there. You got to hit the clit, and the dad is dead, and the the young guy has to train with Obi Wan. You're right. Yeah. How but, do you like that? But uh, you know, I'm a piece of shit. I mean, well, I, Kelly McGinnis played the Emperor. We we put. <laughs> <we put laughs> 
We put in a, uh, we did a podcast, Ron and I, and I, people have turned. They like Ron more than me, if you can believe it. Uh, tough to believe for a heeb, but well, I'm exaggerating. Anything's possible. I mean, uh, what's her face? One, uh, what's that lady? Hmm. What's her name? Half black. Uh, Derek Jeter. Uh, half Indian. Um, lady. Oh, Rashida Jones. No, the sprite vice president. Oh, Kamala Harris. Ah, yes, Camelback. <laughs> Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. Yeah, they got. We got. By the way, bad news coming from the left. I mean, what happened? President, vice president. Nobody likes either one of them. Oh yeah, the, the, it's the a bad polls situation. Are bad. bad ratings. He's got. He's got horrible rating. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, approval. Maybe we should step up. We'll be the P and the VP. I'll be P or V. Uh, Put in the V. VP. This great bit in election. The movie Election. Great one the, movie. One of the great. Great films Great. of all time. Alexander Payne. Where the, uh, the, the vice president is like a retarded kid in a wheelchair. And he oh, comes yeah. up, he's running unopposed, and he's like, I will stand up for you even if I can't stand up. Oh, it's like a right. hilarious uh, layered cold. bit that the vice president <laughs> is just like a handicapped kid. Ah, Great film. Hell of a movie. He fucks the dog. He fucks the student. He's like, she gets so wet. I think uh, about that twice a week. Well, it's so great because it's just sort of a straightforward high school movie for about seven minutes. And right. He's like, I got to tell you one other thing. And he cuts to him and he goes, her pussy gets so yeah, wet. Yeah, so good. Great film. Underrated. Ah. Nobody talking. It's like a quirky, dark comedy. And it's just so good. Well, I think it came out the same year as American Beauty, which like ah. won all the Oscars. And Election is 500,000 times so better. So much better. So much better. But you see that gal's jugs in the... Uh, the beauty, oh yeah, the jugs, yeah, and the rose petal. That movie we just had every every hack symbolism with the bag. Oh, Remember the bag? Stinks. Oh, I used bag to love stinks. that movie too. I was like, I'm gonna go to film school. I'll make the next American Beauty. Then the the Vietnam vet who's gay. Oh, it stinks so bad. I just got back in a house of cards though, and that's fun. Oh, really? Never, never saw it. I tried. I tried. Anything political, I bores me. These old people with the, the the pin of an American flag. I like a pizza. Oh, I love political. Do you ever watch Ides of March? That's fun. Ides of Ryan March. Ryan Gosling no. and Philip Seymour Hoffman. What's and an Ide? I don't know. What the hell's an Ide? Yeah, you got to dot your eye. Oh, Ide. I don't know. I Ida. Mount Ida. Yeah, come on, Eileen. No, no. You know what? Come on, Eileen's about. Jizzin? Jizzin. No. Yeah, it's about a groupie. It's about a uh, it? about them all gangbanging. Yeah, come wow. on, Eileen. It's literal. Wow. We come gotta, on, Eileen. We got to meet Eileen. <laughs> wow, <laughs> she's covered in jizz. <laughs> I think she's stuck to the wall, apparently. She's all sticked up. Wait, but give me your analogy on life, because you said you had oh, a life oh, now. Oh, thank you there, Fatty. Yeah. Yeah, I totally forgot. So, somebody else said, I heard this recently, the brain is like soil, and you're the farmer. Uh. And you got two seeds. You got a seed of... Success, happiness, whatever, and you got a seed of treachery, pain, sadness. You can choose to plant them both, and if you plant both, they will both grow. Right. We should only plant one. Ah, something like that. Similar to you plant corn, you get corn. There you go. Bad band. Very bad. Yeah, but it's basically just like, hey, your thoughts. You become your thoughts. Of course. So if you're thinking about bad shit, I mean, look at all the comedians who you know when you're a new comic and you go. I don't know how funny that guy is, or how smart that guy is, or how ugly that guy is, but he's making it. Oh yes, you could just because they think they're gonna make it, and right. then they make it, right? Unless they're crazy. I remember when I first met Louis, we were in the plane, and uh, I said, uh, "Mark Dorman and Michelle Wolf, those guys are like runaway success trains." And he's like, "Oh, I love comics like that." What? Yeah. Wow. I was well, like, "Those guys, look out for those guys." And he's like, "Oh, I love that." And uh, really, well, he likes Wolf. Yeah, he I know changed, that. He changes his mind from time yeah, to time. Yeah, yeah, he's a flip flopper. Loves you, big fan. All right, he was very nice last time I saw him. There you go. It's got a movie coming out, apparently. Sure does. It's July 1st. Village East. You can get your tickets right now. Angelica Village East. Right now. Go get them. There you go. Ooh, wow. Is that the one on Houston? Uh, no. That's the Angelica. There's two Angelicas. Okay. Angelica bought this one. Village East. You know it. It's on 2nd Avenue. You're going down there. Big old. Oh, that's a great Big dear. apple pie. It's on like 12th, I think. I just realized there's Angelica on Houston, and then there's Angelica Houston. Whoa. How about that? Wow, that's pretty good. That's something there. Put that in your pipe and jizz on, Eileen. I think that she uh, she was fucking Nicholson for a she while. She was. Yeah. And something about her. I wouldn't say she's a traditional beauty, yeah. but she's got something. 
She's got some, well, she's got talent. That helps, but she's got a look. Talent is hot. She looks like a hot witch. We heard a door slam. I know. Well, early when I got here today, he was playing music. So I was like, maybe we could ah. use that if we have a, a, a legal suit. I, I like it. We could be like, well, what do you think? You weren't playing music in there? Right. <laughs> be like, what? It's like when your girlfriend uh, shits on, on the floor and you go, well, I'm going to use that later. <laughs> <laughs> Next time she gets mad at me for eating ice cream at 2 in the morning, I'm going to bring up that old dookie on the carpet. Hey, hey, folks, when you've had a long day and you want to unwind like a grown-up, grab your favorite Lucy gum or nicotine pouch. Look, we all know how hard smoking is to quit. There's goddamn books on it. But hey, why don't you quit by weaning? Not whining, but weaning. Get a little nicotine gum, get a lozenge, get a pouch, put that puppy right in your soup cooler, and kick that cancer stick. If you've been looking for an alternative to smoking, why not switch to nicotine products that can you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you need to check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co. And use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. If you're a listener from... Oh, Canada. You can now get Lucy at ca.lucy.co. Also, I got to read this disclaimer. You know, those legal queefs. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co. And be sure to use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Temperatures aren't the only thing that's rising this summer. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew. The tablets that offer the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. If you don't like swallowing pills, this is for you. There's no doctor's office or waiting in line. Talk to a licensed medical provider and get a prescription all online. And it works fast, so you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. I've done it. We've all done it. You can't deny the BC. Blue Chew, baby. It works. It works quick. It works every time. And I like chewing it. It tastes good. It's actually kind of sweet and tastes like a candy as a, when you're a kid, but that worries me because I want to eat nine of them, and then I'll just, you know, my dick will break off. But... This stuff is foolproof. I did the little, uh, the little, you know, spiel online with the hot lady on a Zoom, and once I talked to her, I don't even know if I needed the blue chew, but you might as well get it because you never know when you're getting that head of yours, and your head's your goddamn enemy. So get on the BC. The tablets are made in the U.S. and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. If you could benefit from extra confidence when it comes time to perform, blue chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free with promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. With promo code TUESDAYS, receive your first month free. Wow. Five bucks to get a big pile of pills that'll help you perform in the sack. Feels pretty good. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And thanks, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. By the way, I did a therapy session in here because Alan was exposed to uh, monkeypox. Ah, so, I knew he was gay. So he's um, he's doing the uh, mobile or what do you what do you call it? Not mobile, mobile phone. Yeah, but not that. The what Zoom. Do you, what do you call it though when you're like I'm working? Um, Oh, oh, isolated. Oh, uh, uh, is that an M word? No, I got it. Uh, Mobily. Remotely. Remotely. Yes. I knew there was an M. Remote so control. he's working remote, and uh, so I came here. And did a little therapy session. And this feels like a therapist's office. I had it my does. legs crossed, and I kind of I was pretending it was you. I was talking like this. <laughs> How weird. But I was worried this guy was going to hear because, you know, we're always talking about rape and anal and jizz. And then sure. I'm in here being like, well, my dad, you know, his mustache has been thinning or whatever. Right. It has been thinning, and it <laughs> smells like poo, I noticed. But, uh, <laughs> wow. So you, what you get here at 4 a.m.? I got here, uh, well, I got. I went to Chipotle, brought a burrito back here, ate a burrito. I, I feel like Kramer when Seinfeld, when Jerry was gone. Right. I ate a burrito over <laughs> there. Put the curtain up. You did a set. <laughs> I did a the spoon session. I put this chair together and then took it apart again. Oh, that's fun. It's been a nice, nice time. I worked out at Equinox. I steamed. I feel like a million bucks. Oh, it's the best feeling. I, I, now, this is going to sound horrible, and, and don't judge me here, folks, but... Uh, 
So the lady, you know, she works from home. And, Remotely. You know, yeah, I had to, exactly. I had to get a... Uh, I had to get used to that because I was a big home guy. You know, you know, you're a comedian. You wake up at noon. You rub one out. You go to the gym. You do some writing. You watch TV. Whatever it is. Now I had to accustomate, accustomate, accustomize. No. no. Um, Accul- ac- acclimate. 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 Yeah, Affleck. acclimate. So I had to acclimate to her being around. Which she's. It's nice to have her around. She's got big cans. She's a nice lady. But you also. Have to be around somebody. Sure. Not to mention that carpet shitting, so that that's a problem. But I didn't realize she's gone. They they're making her go back in for two or three days a week now. Woo! Slowly weaning Woo-hoo! them back. And Woo! I had the place to myself. I woke up. I was, I was like home alone. I jumped on the bed. I ordered a pizza. I, I shot at Joe Pesci. It was great. Wow, that's a good feeling because you love your lady, of sure. course. Sure. But sometimes it's nice to be alone. I, I go on the road. It's not you, you're choosing the meals, you're choosing the time, you're choosing the program. Yep. Uh, you, I, I can watch hockey. I can watch hoop. I can. I, and then the masturbating. Forget about uh, it. I got my toe in my. Ass. I got my big toe crammed up my ass. Right up the poop. I'm still on the pinky toe, but I'll work my way up. <laughs> but That's yeah, a sharp she, nail. <laughs> you got that right. Nail in the coffin. So she's uh, she's gone. And but you know we do all our 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 recharging on the road. Like you go, I'll watch this hockey game, but I still got to write. Mm. So you can get both in, whereas with her, I'd be like, all right, I'll, I'll write on the roof, and then I'll skip the hockey game and go to lunch with her, you know? Right. But now you get both, and I got so much done. I went and worked out. I went and did, like, ran some errands. I picked up a package. I wrote some jokes. I feel like I've had a, a harder career with her at home. <laughs> Well, absence you, makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, I guess. but you don't get as much work done. Yes, it's tough. Well, you know, you gotta, you gotta. Life is all very balancing. Yes, you know? balance. You got this thing. You got to go visit those people, then the parents, Who then balance? the other friends, the whole thing. Right, exactly. So I'm just saying, it's uh, those days where she's going into the office. I'm gonna put those. Right on the big cow and really soak them in. Yeah, well, I, I haven't seen my wife since the '60s. I was on the road. I was in San Francisco for. I was in London for 11 days, uh-huh. and I've been back. I went to San Francisco for three days, Vancouver for one day, Gig Harbor for one day, home for one day, wow. and I go to Baltimore for three days. Jesus, you're pushing it, fatty. And then I'm going to Atlanta for two days, and then Maine for a week, San Sarah. Uh-huh. Uh, she has her own gig, so it's a lot of uh, separate time, which I, I think it's not, I think it's good for a relationship. I think it's great for a relationship, and I think it's healthy, and we have it built in to mm. our... Think about, let's say you, you're married for 50 years. God willing, she'll die soon. But you're married for a while. Think about all the minutes you're with your lady versus some Tom, Dick, and Harry who you know has a normal gig, and they both work from home. Right. And they're there every weekend. Yeah, it's weird because you have a, a a tank. Like they fill their tank. tank. The tank starts spilling everywhere. Tank Sinatra, exactly. Yeah. So that tank fills up a little quicker for comedians, I think. Yeah, it is weird though with life. I mean, you don't want to hold on to the rope, but you're like, well, one less day in my life left. Ah, uh, that's weird, right? That's true. I heard Bobby Kelly once say, he "Goes, I got about forty summers left." I was like, when you put it like that. Yeah, I was just talking to my pet, not, not to get depressing, but I'm talking to Derek, and they bought a new car, and he's like, yeah, it's like, you don't have to get too stressed. You're only buying, like, two, three more cars the rest of your life. If you use your car right, you know what I mean? I mean, how many cars are you buying? Yeah, yeah, it just when you put it, when you when you measure a lifespan in, in a car length, it's uh, scary. Well, what about a house? Louis built a house uh, upstate somewhere, very high up, miles away. And uh, he's like, yeah, I got about good 20, 20 good years in this house. Uh, and then you're like, oh, uh, oh, my God. Yeah. And then what's even scarier, speaking of the rope yanking, is I think back to like, oh, I was in uh, this. I was in the, uh, London with Joe. That's just gone. That's gone. It doesn't exist no more. And then you forget about it. Like five years later, you go, oh. And then you try to remember part of it. We're actually remembering or a, a memory. Right. So now it's a copy of a copy and a paste of a paste. It's brutal. Well, the future and past don't exist. They're just figments of our uh, imagination. Fig but Newton. It's also weird. I always think about this. I tell people this all the time. Like, we're having this conversation. We will never, we won't even remember this. This is a moment in our lives. It's the only thing happening in our lives right now. Yep. And then, like, uh, a week from now, I'll be like, what did we talk about last week? I know. And, and is that the key to life? Or 
or should we save her? But then that's holding the rope. Like, like I'll go out with Kreischer. Nobody lives more than Kreischer. I mean, he won't live long, but he's on a bus. He's in a baseball stadium telling jokes. Then he's overseas. Then he's playing with his kids. Then he's in his pool swimming. Then he's drinking. Then he's on another bus. Then he's on a, a private jet. And he never takes a second to to look in the rearview mirror. He's never recouping. What do you call it? Uh, reconcile? No. Mm. Reflecting. Reflecting. He never reflects. He's all forward, forward, forward. What's next? What's next? And I'm like, is that the way to do it? Because you have all these great memories, more than most 99.9% of the population. You're living way more than them. You're more exciting. Your life is better. But if you're not catching any of it and it just goes by, is it still good? Well, it's 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 if it's how you are in the moments. If are you present? I mean, a lot of times I don't know Bert that well, but a lot of times he's filming himself and talking to a camera. So sure. I, mean, I don't know how much he's taking it in. He's on a mountaintop, but he's got a selfie stick. Yeah, I mean, he's so, taking it in uh, as much as you can. He's like, this is a good pizza. We're playing frisbee golf. I made it. You know, uh, he's living. Yeah, so it's how you are in those moments is all you can do. Right. You, don't, you don't do things so you have the memories. You do things so you enjoy them in that time. I guess that's true. There but was, but, it, it's hard because sometimes you th- what you think is living. Like in my 20s, that was a big part of my struggles was I was like, that, this is living. we got to stay up all night. Yes. Stay up till the sun comes up. Yes, we'll same. drink all night like Sinatra. Right. Like fuck it, like a Tom Waits song. And then I look back and I'm like, I was like blacked out and like retarded. I, know, I don't even I know, know what the fuck I was doing. I now know, I right? go home early and I'm like, now I'm content and happy. I'm mindful. I'm yes. enjoying myself. Yes. Here, here. I'm really, now I feel like I'm really living. My idea of living when I was 25 was not living. Is the idea of not living now. Yeah, you were just, you weren't even there. So it's not really, a, you weren't even alive. You weren't even conscious. I have a distinct memory of me. I think I was five, six. I had a shitty little bed in the Dufour Baldwin house of New Orleans on Esplanade Avenue. And I remember sitting in my bed going, I'm five years old. This will never happen again. I'm taking this all in. This will be a memory. Ah. And it's gone. I mean, that's 33 years ago. Right. And I still remember it. Now it's all just appearances and consciousness. But my niece just turned ten, and she—I was like, "You're gonna be double." This is before. I was like, "You're gonna be double digits. It's a big birthday. It's exciting." She's like, "I don't want to be 10. Yeah. She's already afraid of aging. She's wow. like, "Cause then you're ten, then you get old. When you're old, you suck." I wonder if that's new. Cause when I was younger, I was like, "I cannot wait to get a get a clit in my ass and a drink and a car." Well, it's all learned behavior. She's probably looking at her parents and probably uh-huh. at some point being like, "God, I'm old. I don't want to get old." So she's like, "I don't want to get old either." If they don't want to get old, I don't want to get old. Your yeah. parents were probably you know toasting and fucking. They were toasting and fucking <laughs> me. But, yeah, I mean, these young kids, uh, she's going to have Botox by 11. I feel like we're bumming out Brian here. Brian, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel like he just, just I looked down, he's just staring at his shoes, contemplating oh, life. No, no, Well, this is, I think it's kind of philosophical and fun, but we'll, we'll keep talking about fucking kids. But also, the other thing is, everything, yeah, it's, so, it's like, you got to live in the moment, but you also have to live under the assumption that you will live at least 70 years. Of it's course. Like, you want to have this idea of, like, Live in the moment, but it's like, but most likely you aren't going to die tomorrow. So you want to, the decisions we make today affect who we are 10 years from now and 20 years from now. I know, but we have a friend and we don't want to get too, uh, too obvious here, but he's very successful. He's doing great right now. He's killing it. We don't, I don't think he's happy about it. And he's always worried about, but this isn't working. And that isn't where he can't absorb the part that is work, which I, I have a problem with that too, but seeing him like that. Makes me go, oh, I got, I got to stop being like that. Yeah, different, different, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. But yeah, no, I uh, sometimes those people help me because I'm yeah. like, well, I'm not doing as well uh, with numbers, but I feel like I'm enjoying it. Yeah, you're a you're living more. You're at a you're at a, you're at Asbury Park. Watching a concert and living. Yeah, I'm having a nice time. So and managing to work a ton also. So it's all good pipes. and fun. It's all pipes and, and and speaking of work, let's let's shift into this. Sorry, uh, trip. a shift. Oh, do we have time? Are you timing this at all? You have any idea how long we've oh, been going? Geez. This could be a mess. Oh, oh, okay. Great. Hey, MJ. Well done. Um, oh yeah. All right. So that means we started at four ten. Okay. Keep that in mind. We, uh, Mark has a train to catch. Yeah, I'm going to Poughkeepsie. Which Ooh. I love saying, because it sounds like a, something Bugs Bunny would say. Ah, I gotta get a train to Poughkeepsie. Yeah, it's fun. He would say Albuquerque, but this is the East Coast. Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, but I was on the West Coast. Ooh, the Ivory Coast. What a coast. The best coast, some people say. Coast with the most. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool out there, and uh, I went out to San Francisco. Now, most times I'm traveling to the western United States. If I go to Seattle, I go early to see the fam there. The cute, and the, I, the rug rats. The little rug rats. And if I go to L.A., you see in France, you're doing spots. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of markets where you're like doing a full week. I guess there's like Sacramento, San Fran, whatever. Yeah. I'm not accustomed. So I flew out there, and you're on East Coast time. I do the Thursday show, great, which is the best show of the whole week. It was packed and fun. And then, or maybe my favorite show, but maybe Saturday. It doesn't matter. They say the fans come out there, but everybody's got their different theory. And then Friday, we're doing a 7.30, 9.45. The show starts late for whatever reason. It starts at like 10.30. I'm going on stage at 11. It's 2 a.m. my time. Uh, I'm all true. whacked out. That's I'm like, and I, you know me. I go to bed at 11. I wake up at fucking 6 a.m. like a farmer. Yeah. So We I, uh, are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Farmers only. So uh, I was just all cuckoo and cracky, and, and you start to get cranky. You're like, can we start the fucking show here, for God's sake? I don't sakes? get it either. Is, they say, well, it's short staff. We got to give the, the waiter a, a, a chance to catch up. I don't know what that is. Well, whatever. Maybe people showed up late. I don't know. Traffic, the whole thing. But uh, San Francisco, I was like, I was nervous because you know me and the kooks. Mm-hmm. The kooks, they got it out for me. It's crazy. And everything, you, every time you turn on the TV, they're like, San Francisco's crazy. Yep. It's wild. They just kicked out the DA. It's all Ooh. It's all wacky. Dick and ass. So I went out there, and uh, I, I check into the hotel, beautiful hotel, the Polly or Pally mm. Hotel. Want a cracker. Um, I show up, and the guy hands me a map, one of those like local maps, and it's got a Sharpie. He's circled tenderloin with an X through it. <laughs> and he's like, hold on to that, my friend. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like a block away. And he's like, you can go east, you can go north, you can go south. You just can't go west or southwest. Uh-huh. And it's like, it's so uh, intimidating to show up in a town like that. Of course, of course. And after all the shit you've heard, you're like, it's true. The I people know. in the city are telling me this. It's crazy. But then uh, the it, it was okay. You know, I walked around. I got to get my steps in, the whole thing. So I walked around. I, there was kooks everywhere. But you, almost, you, you actually uh, you feel more sad than scared with these. The ones in the village, I feel like are like... Ah, like yeah. crazy and aggressive. These were like the old, like, just kind of <laughs> yeah. strung out, standing like a question mark. And you're just like, oh, Jesus that's, Christ. That's, that's the heroin talking. I, yeah. I think we got a lot of drunks out here. I think meth, too. Ah, I think meth, meth is big. Yeah, meth is you, a big thing. You do the meth. <laughs> um, but uh, it was beautiful, and I bumped into Shang Wang. So I met up with Shang Wang. Hilarious. Great to see Shang. He just shot a, a little Netflix thing. Keep an eye out for that. Love the Wang. Had long, I didn't even recognize him. The hair passed his shoulder. I hadn't seen him in years. Oh, yeah. He's all in. Great guy. Love the Shanger. And then Joey Avery came by. Ah, he's cute. He drove me home. He had a broken ankle. Drove me home ah, with a broken kid, ankle. Kid's falling apart. Sweet kid. Good yes. kid. And then my pal Dave Yates. You know Dave Yates? No Yates. Peoria lives in L.A. No Yates. Great guy. He came down. We had a dinner, which was nice. We walked around uh, North Beach, which is Little Italy. Oh, that's a beautiful area. Fantastic. And uh, then I went down Saturday. I went down to the Golden Gate uh, beach there, whatever that beach is, it's called, I don't know, Billy's or Silly's or Cisco's, whatever. I, I went for a long run along the beach under the Golden Gate Bridge where the bay meets the ocean, the fog coming in. Ooh-wee. Spectacular. Now, wait, are you Ubering to the gate b- bridge beach or do you walk there then run? I Ubered to the Palace of Arts, I think, that huge monument. It's oh, a yeah. massive, big art piece. Walked around into there and prayed and jerked off sure. and whatever, meditated. You got to do five times a day. Then from there, I went for a run. And then down by the marina is this beautiful air. I mean, it is spectacular. Because San Francisco, they've, they've contained the, the nonsense. And mm. the rest of the city is just unbelievable. That's how they get. I feel like New York has a lot of that. Although mm. we're a little shiftier because it's like, hey, there was a slashing on 42nd. You're like, 42nd? I go there all the time. No, New York is worse than San Francisco. We just don't have the one neighborhood. Right. Like, if right. you just took out Tenderloin, their city would be better, I think. Yeah, we're peppered. We're, we got a pepper. Way everywhere. worse. Nobody's safe. You want salt. Right. But, man, it was spiritual. There's that old Fort Point Fort. Mm. It's an old Civil War horse shit. And uh-huh. big brick fucking thing. And you can go on the top, and, and it's just beautiful. I need the ocean. It heals, Jerry. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. And those sea lions. Arr, arr. 
That's exciting. Alcatraz and Al, Cap- Al Capone was in Alcatraz. Ah. How about that? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, I think Al Capone's also producing our podcast today. <laughs> he got syphilis or what? <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was just spectacular. I, I don't have a story. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but I, it was just awesome, and um, I, was, I loved it. Something about that city. It's got a magic to it. The old buildings, the weird kooky streets, the trolley, the hills, the the the, the sea lions, as I said. I love that city. It's a tiki bar. Right on that pier by where the sea lions are. Mm. Highly recommend. I can't think of the name of it, but it's just such a great town. You just want to walk the whole thing. I was walking everywhere. I got 15,000 steps every day, and the shows were just rocking. The Tuesdays are out in full force. We sold out every show. It was fantastic. Oh, that's a good feeling. And that's a cute. That room is so perfect. It's so conducive for yucks. Great room. Had never been there, and it's like a rich history, and uh, the shows were just awesome. I loved it. I loved San Fran. It was so much fun. So then I got, I fit it. Club Quarters? No, Pally. Uh, oh, better. Pally. Oh, sorry. Pally. Sorry. Yeah, I think you've upgraded. I think the Club Quarters, somebody uh, was burned down, or ah. somebody was staying there. Something happened there. All right. But it was nice. And then I went out to Sausalito with my friends from the baseball show. Check out PioneerBaseballLeague.com every Wednesday night from 9 oh. to midnight East Coast time. That's right. I got the time wrong last time. Uh-huh. Uh, it's great stuff. we got Tom Brenneman, legendary, and uh, myself. We've had great guests, Pete Rose. Uh, wow. I think Charles Barkley, Kirby Puckett's going to be on. It's uh, oh. all very exciting. Prince and Kirby Puckett. Um, so check that out. But they picked me up, the guy that runs it, Mike Shapiro, his son Jackson, great guys. And he's like, well, we'll take you out to lunch because they live out there. So he picked me up in a convertible. It was like 80 Ooh. degrees, sunny, unseasonably warm. I love it. And we went over a convertible. It was like full house. We drove over the Golden Gate Bridge a convertible. Everywhere you look. I mean, it was great. I felt like I was taking videos, photos. We went under the bridge to Sausalito. Have you uh, been to Sauce? No sauce. I'm off the sauce. You got to get to Sausalito. Next time you go... Get over that bridge, go I'm underneath in. Sausalito. It's like it's like a millionaire paradise over there with the cafes. We ate in the water. I ate some fish and chips, shoved it right in my wow, ass. Wow, this is great. See, you were nervous about the meetup, but uh, it worked out. It was a great meetup. Don't tell him I was nervous. Uh, well, wait, 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 we're nervous. Uh, we're nervous, guys, but uh, great all-American family. How about this? You're going to shit. You're going to take your pants All off right. take a shit. Give me a diaper. I mean, this is, this is up there with McCartney. Oh, 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 the McCartney the, the story. Okay, okay. I mean, I this is the Red Scare. This is up there with the hanging with McCartney, meeting Springsteen, having a movie. Wait a minute, I'm not prepared for. A, is this a celeb sighting? You're gonna take your pants off, wrap them around your head, and kiss this guy on the grits. Uh, bring it on. Put on some <laughs> lipstick and binaca, baby, because I'm planting a fat one right on your kisser. I didn't. I don't even think you're ready. I'm not ready. So. I'm going out to Montana, Whitefish, Montana. They got Wait, a baseball. I you're in San Fran. No, I'm going. Future. Ah, future, future. The future Good is now. Singer. So they got a baseball team out there in Whitefish called the the Clams or the Dry Jizz. I don't know. They're minor league teams. are weird. The, the city is called Whitefish? Whitefish is the city. All right. You know about Whitefish. Oh, the yeah. Jews. <laughs> All right. I think it's a town. Okay. More than a... But they got a ballpark. Uh-huh. And they're the Whitefish, you know... Come drinkers or whatever, yeah. yeah. So they got a team out there. I work for the league. I'm employed by the Pioneer Baseball League. You got that right. I hear this. <laughs> Nervous. I'm going out there. Fourth of July. It's Glacier National Park. They built this ballpark right in the glacier. You got to get out there. If you come out to the game, July 5th and 6th, they're embedding me on the team. Wow, embed. I'm going to play. I'm playing professional what? baseball. Get out I got of a here. uniform. I might get net bat. I'm going to be in the dugout, Are Jerry. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. What? They're I'm gonna, a ball player. They're going to pat your ass. You're going to choot tobacco. You're going to spit. You're going to do this with the, the dirt. You're going to kick it on a guy's foot. I want to get an injury with an umpire and be like, Blue, that's the worst call. And turn around like Earl Weaver yeah. and, and blow him or whatever. I want him to run me. Yes. Oh, my God. What about this shit? Oh, are you kidding? I'll do all that all day. I love, that. I love that shit. That's the Vogue, I believe. Oh, sorry. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in uniform in the dugout, and I'm, they're like, "Would you take it that bad?" I'm like, "Were you kidding me? I'm getting, I'm going to get a, a base hit, a knock." Oh, we got to do a montage. We'll get you in some batting cages. We'll throw the ball around. We'll get you out in the Central Park, and, and you know, pitch a few. I think they don't know though. They don't know. They don't know me, man. No. I'm showing up there. I want to get a double. I fuck this guy. I want to get a nice base hit off this son of a bitch. Yes, they're I'm, not ready. I'm coming to play. I mean, I. 
was an all-star, and uh, I still play a bit, so I'm ready. I'm going to hit the Woo! cages, but I'm going to be in uniform. How about this? June 30th, our movie premieres, a movie that I'm starring in, premieres at the Beacon. Less than a week later, I'm playing professional baseball. Why? You're living every dream. You're like an 11-year-old you. It's crazy. I'm, oh I'm just going to be coming all over that uniform. If you fuck Kathy Ireland, that's a trifecta. I mean, forget about it. So get your tickets to the Whitefish uh, Hawk and Hens. I don't know what the name of the team is. Ah, the Hawk of the Hens. <laughs> but come on out. I'll be there. I might I might pitch. I want to do every – I want to I be the umpire. I want to play third base coach. I want to be the left fielder. So wait, are you playing in a game or are you just kind of going out there and, and uh, fucking around? I'm signing a one-day contract, which makes me a professional baseball wow. player. Wow. And I think I'm going to be in the dugout in uniform, and I think we're going to try to get me an at-bat. Hopefully it's a blowout or oh whatever. Oh, my God. DiMaggio, Griffey, list. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but during the day, I'm going to take BP. I'm going to be shagging fly balls. I'm going to be shagging my father. I, I can't wait. you got to love sports. This uh, is very exciting. Let's play two. It's, I'm, very, I'm, I'm just thrilled. I love that all your baseball references are from Simon. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> um, I just I, I can't wait. I'm busting Jerry. I want to throw you a bag of nuts. It's gonna be crazy, and I got uh, my niece and nephew are gonna come. I'm gonna try to get them to run the bases and shit. Oh, and Sarah man. will be there on her phone. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> you got that right. Well, I can't wait to see in that dugout. I can't wait to see that snug pant around your package and your ass. You gonna have a cleat? I'm going to clean spikes, Jerry. They call oh, spikes. Oh, Spike Jones. Oh, boy. Look at that form. Oh, it's going to be something. I'm, I'm going to do a Julio Franco. I'm going to do a Mickey Tettleton. I might do, uh, you know, Elton John. Johnny Damon. <laughs> yeah, Big Poppy. Maybe a little, uh, you, you, what's his name? Uh, A-Rod has herpes. Oh, that's right. So Maybe I'll call him. Say, yes. hey. I got herpes in that bat here. Give me some advice. <laughs> we got a lot in common. We both fuck J-Lo once, baby. All right. Here's the weird thing, though. It's like a young, it's a development league. So they're uh, all like 20, 21. Okay. Don't you feel, do you feel the way I feel? I feel youthful. I feel like a child. Sure. I think because no college, no job, mm, we're, we're retards. Comedians. We say jizz all the time. Yeah. To them, the players, they're going to be like, there's an old man in here. You got that I'm right. I'm 40. Yeah, it's like the ball boy episode. You're going to have to come in and show them what's what, but you're going to outshow them. I might show them. I mean, I think I can get a base hit off this fucking yanker. I think so, yeah. Yanker? I mean, yanker. A, uh, a homer a homer is a little out of the question. Uh, That's a long fence back there. <laughs> But uh, I think he can definitely get a line drive. I'm going to try to get a base hit. I mean, who? he's going to blow his cheese right by me. But there's also this thing. I'm a baseball purist. I know the game. I love the game. And all I can think is, if this guy had any, you know, uh, if he was worth his jizz and assholes, mm. he'd plunk me. Plunk? Hit you. Ah, the old, give me the old bow tie. Because if, if I'm playing in a baseball league and some 40-year-old comedian steps to the plate, I'm sure. drilling them between the numbers. No, I think you want to strike them out. You go, oh, this is an easy out. We got old uh, lanky bad teeth here. This guy's a goner. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to plunk. That's that's mean. They, you don't want to hurt the old man. But in baseball, you're like, who's this guy in our territory? I, I mean, wouldn't respect him if he didn't hit me. But if he hits me, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll shatter. You, you gotta charge him out, <laughs> maybe. But he might give me a little chin music. But I don't think he's gonna plunk. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had a glass of milk since '85. <laughs> that's true. These bones will implode. That's a lot of green tea. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Hopefully, he gives me the uh, the, the nice. Throws me a little salad so I can get a base hit and point yeah. to my nephew and fuck him. But nothing worse than that curvy. You know that, <laughs> that well, ball is more schizophrenic than my uh, my ex. Well, there's an old saying, nothing's kept more talented baseball players out of the league than the curveball. Oh, you that can't thing. hit it. You can't hit it. It's like Amber Heard. It's, it's uh, all over the road. Well, I think that people take the game, they take it for granted that these guys are hitting curveballs. Uh, like, there's a lot of guys that hit 500 in high school, they're superstars, then they get to the next level, and people are just throwing these firecracker curveballs sure. at them. And they go, you know, forget it, fuck my wife in the ass until she comes. Yeah, I did, I did a little league for about a month and a half, and uh, <laughs> I pitched, and there was one guy on the team who could do the... <laughs> That thing, it looked like a drunk driver, that thing. It would just swerve at the end and go in a ditch, but it would go right down the pipe, right down the middle. And I was like, how did you do that? He he was a little squirrely kid with one eye. He was from the wrong side of the tracks. He'd spit on it. It was wild. <laughs> I 
remember one of my favorite jokes ever was on Bugs Bunny. We referenced Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Bugs Bunny is catching, and the guy throws a pitch, and his arm extended out in front of the the, the bat, and he caught it before it got to him. <laughs> Strike! <laughs> it was classic. That's he great. went whoop and uh, caught it and pulled it back, and the guy uh, it was great. I mean, one of the great. This might have made me laugh more than seven other things in life, but the naked gun when he's the umpire. Uh. And oh my God, I would do that every day at summer camp, and everybody would go, "All right, we got it. You're, you're 12 miles uh, off the base." It's the best when he does the spin fucking thing. <laughs> That's it's amazing. So and the funniest. Part, <laughs> oh, he goes so good. The best part is the first time he recognizes yes, the applause. Yes, He's exactly. Like, <laughs> they like it. They like it. He, he, can, he starts eating it up. Which, by the way, <laughs> also one of the best jokes ever is in the same scene when the two guys are in the uh, the throne. <laughs> With the bunting. Uh, this the is the queen bunting. Seats. And then they're smoking cigarettes. Uh, and they're like, oh, we're not in the. <laughs> feed her up. He's got a beer. That's so good. Uh, two schlubby guys. Because <laughs> that's what you do. Woo. You got a couple beers and you go, we can take these. Uh, great man, sequence. Great film. Woo. Very good film. Oh, oh boy. Well, let, me, let me tell you what I saw on Sixth Avenue the other day. This, this is where the city's at. And I think. We're already in a cuckoo place in our lives, and the world and the country is a little out of out of whack. And sure, ad whack. It's in hoc. You ever heard that? Ad hoc. Ad hoc. What yeah. is that? I don't know. It must be Latin. I think it's like a skateboarding program, and they're like, ah, no one's gonna come. What do we do? Ad hoc, Tony. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Policy Genius. Whether you're graduating from school, planning a wedding, welcoming a baby, or switching jobs, now's the time to protect your family's finances. Oh, you got to get on that, folks. Uh, I signed a prenup with my gal. You know, it's all about the moolah. You don't want to get screwed over. Get your affairs in order. You got that, folks? Get those finances cooking. Figure it out. The stock market's through the floor. Crypto's fake. Uh, I'm not Jewish or Asian, so I don't know what I'm doing. So get on it. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash Tuesdays to get started. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price, you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The licensed agents at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. Head to policygenius.com slash Tuesdays to get your free life insurance quote and see how you can save. That's policygenius.com slash Tuesday. Tuesday Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped would like to introduce their biggest and best hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Not grooming kids, grooming genitals. Not trust them with the whole shebang. Inside the Platinum Package is Manscaped's greatest hits. The waterproof lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. I got one of these puppies in my suitcase right now, and I can't wait to trim the hedges because it makes my dick look bigger because I got a crazy mane of wacky Jufro pubo. couple of grays in there too, folks. I'm getting old. You got an LED spotlight on that son of a bee. For a more precise shave, use the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer to keep all those holes nice and trim. The package also includes their best ultra premium collection products, so you'll smell fresh and clean from head to ball. Plus, the Shed Travel Bag holds all your stuff on the go. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all the bases. It's the best thing for the best bang for your buck for the whole shebang. Get 20% off with... Eh, wait. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life. 
and get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package, folks. Love Manscaped. Get on it. Thank you. So, I'm I'm on my uh, hogaroo there, and you know me, I'm illegally going in and out of the bike lane, back into the regular lane, and I'm kind of tailing this cab and a uh, and an SUV are like kind of fucking with each like swerving toward each other, mm-hmm. swerving back. They they're 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 kind of chickening a little ah. bit. They hate each other. I Ooh. think one of them cut each other off, and now they won't let it go. So right. eventually, I'm kind of like watching. The, you can see them in the window, you know, cabbie. And eventually, they go, fuck it. The cabbie pulls over, puts it in park. To, I, I have to, like, get out of the way because he slides right in front of me, puts it in park, gets out of the cab and goes, come on, come on, let's go. Oh and my I, God. I'm talking, this guy was like, if Apu was a, was a real guy. I mean, mm. flip floppy, like Birkenstock <laughs> sandals, sweatpants, uh, a Yankee hat, and like a, just... A t-shirt, but like big Indian guy. Oh, okay. So then the SUV goes, all right. He pulls over, and this big Italian guy comes out with a pink polo, white shorts, and flip-flops. And he's like, all right, all right. And the Indian guy's like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. And the, the Italian guy just goes, ah! Whoa! And he, sl- he choke slams him up against the hood, and the guy's oh. like, ah, ah! And I was like, oh, wow. Because in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to see a nice fight. It'll be a little of this, a little of that. Yeah. The Italian guy's like, I'm not doing that. I hate you. I want to hurt you. I'm not going to do this bullshit where we, where we, uh, you know, have the Queen's, uh, Queen's English or whatever you call that. Pop like, the Dukes. Yes. He's like, no, fuck that. I'm going to hurt you. Wow. And it, 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 it kind of like it opened my eyes a little. Like, oh yeah, that's what fighting is. Right. It's not just the movies. Well, there's no, nah, there's no rules out there. Exactly. You just grab the throat and and, and come in it. Yeah. So the, the he choked the guy and he was like. Fuck you! I'll kill you. Whatever. And the Indian guy was like, "Oh my god!" And then he let him off. And the Indian guy went back at him, and he just goes, and he smacked the guy across the oh. face, and the Indian guy's hat flew off. Oh my god! Well, at least it was a Yankee hat. That's true. And uh, go socks. But uh, I couldn't believe he had no socks. But I couldn't <laughs> believe it that it was it was eye opening. Like this is reality. Wow. You know. And uh, the, to the Indian guy's credit, he picked up his hat, kept yelling, went around the car took a photo of the guy's license plate. So now the Italian guy's like, oh, we're doing that now. So he took a photo, and then they start filming each other like, this guy, look at it. And they're, they're both holding cameras, phones, at each other's faces. They look like complete tards. And then they get back in the car, and they keep doing it. Oh they go up God. a block. Er, they get out again. They fight again. Ah, they, they're holding onto the rope too tight. That's a tight rope, rope. Rope, yes, yes. They're walking the tight rope, and I, ha- I was like, I got an hour, and I watched every block. Wow. Fuck pay per view. Fuck Hulu. Fuck TikTok. I had uh, India Italia uh, soccer match over here. Wow, that is wild. Wild. Uh, you think once the guy gets the better of you, yes. you go, All right. Well, my bad. That's, See you later. That's why it was so fascinating. I couldn't stop watching because I, I thought. I, I related more to the Indian guy, just I guess because he got his ass kicked and he was the loser. Right. But I was impressed with the, uh, I know I can't beat you, but I will not stop. He's like, cool hand Luke. The gumption. Is it yes. gumption or gumsure? Shin. Shin. Splint. There you go. There's a shin. Yeah. But uh, fun to watch. And uh, also the cool thing about watching a fight is other people stop and you go, oh. Huh. Oh yeah, it's fun. You, now you and him are friends. How about this? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Same with hot hot ladies. Hot lady walks by and you go, and he goes, I know, right? Yeah, it's pretty fun. And by the way, it's the season. Tis the season. Oh, the clavicles are out, baby. These ladies, the shorts and the skirts and the flip flops and the and the bras. It's weird because you're like, oh yeah, girls have uh, hot bodies. You forget all mm-hmm. year until they uh, they show them off, and you're like, oh, there they are. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. You see that skit because yeah, you spend like six months imagining them nude. Then yes. you go to the beach and they're nude. There they are. Essentially. Do they have that with dudes? Because I think men look better with more clothes. So maybe in the winter, women are like, hey, look at that scarf. Look at that coat. I think so. I think to some degree, they got to be excited. They like an ab, I think. I oh, don't know. yeah, an ab. I yeah. can't really remember what they like. I think they like uniforms. They like That's firemen and cops. More, more clothes, the better on a man. Yeah, a helmet is helpful. Oh, love a hell! Even a beard, a beard helps. I think. Well, I'm gonna be in uh, whitefish with a be- with a Ooh. helmet, and uh, I might get the fucking plastic mask thing too, just in case. Yeah, be one of those assholes. Put a put a full hazmat suit on, and you'll be you'll be George Clooney. Uh, it's gonna cut to me. This like on the back line of the batter's box. Like, <laughs> 
You don't want to get plunked, though. By the way, what did they say? To make it to first base, like 24% of, of players make it to first base. It's very low. What do you mean? Well, it's so hard to get to first base. Oh, Once you get to first base, you can get to second easy. But the first base is tough. We're talking sex? What are we talking? Well, yeah. Talking I mean, I mean the, the best hitter in the league hits uh, like 330. That's like 33% of the time. There you go. That's the best. That's the best. Yeah. Which is probably why people think baseball is boring. Because they're like, oh, I didn't even make the first. So it's just like, oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. A lot of that. That's like Andy Sanford's great bit. The, the perfect game. What's that now? This thing was about the perfect a pitcher through a perfect game. That's when nobody gets on base. It's twenty seven up, twenty seven out. So he's uh, like, "That's perfect." Oh, uh, that's so, funny. so the ideal game is if both pitchers throw a perfect game, literally nothing happens. That's like the most perfect game. Oh, that's a great, great. But he does, take. but he does a whole. He's much funnier than he's that. He's funny guy. Very funny. You know, I love jokes like that where it's just like, oh yeah, the little you, you, you take away. Uh, Grant Gordon had a bit about. Uh, he's like. You know the term casual sex? That means you go around fucking a bunch of people. It's casual sex. But he's like, that's not casual. I had to take her out, buy her drinks. I'm wearing my best shirt. The sex is weird. I don't know her at all. She's got pubic hair. I jizz in her eye, and I go home and never call her again. Casual sex is when you're with your girl for 12 years. You're both wearing sweatpants. (laughs) You know, you got a Cheeto dust on your face, and you're like, hey, you want to go knock this out? And you're like, you're both laying on your side. He's like, that's casual. That's a great point. Great point. Great bit. There you go. And now you can see Grant Gordon on every cell phone commercial in America. Oh, yeah. Is that still? He's one of them. He's there's Flow, there's Progressive, there's AT&T, there's the Can You Hear Me Now? Oh, yeah, there's that Jared guy. There's the Subway guy. They're all the same. The other guy, uh, J.K. Rowling, was always on there, too. J.K. JK Simmons. Ah, uh, We Are Farmers. Yes. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, that's right. So I guess he's insurance. Yeah, but the, the insurance, they got the, uh, the Aflac duck, they got the Geico lizard, they got the... Uh, What's that guy who always gets hurt? He's like wearing a full suit and he jumps through a window. Oh, yeah. What is it? Mayhem. 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 Wow, you know his name. What's wow. the insurance, though? That's nationwide. That's, <laughs> that's not a it? good sign. You know the, I, the I guy. I think it's nationwide, isn't it? No, they're on your side. Yeah, that's Pedro Serrano from Major League. That's right. Um, oh, yeah, he's good. No, what is it? Allstate. Thank that's you. That's Allstate because he's in all the sports business. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the Allstate. That's the guy who gets hurt. I think so, yeah. I don't care for his uh, vibe. He seems very antagonistic. Well, that's the fun, the fun part. I guess you throw him through a plate glass window. I don't know. That's not fun to me. I hate that's... antagonism. Okay. But, but he's, not, he's not coming through your window. No, but he just has that that feel. He's got all a vibe. Right, fuck you. I'm like, hey, all right. <laughs> I'm just trying to watch the ball you. game here. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. What did I do? <laughs> not my fault you got in a car wreck or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't have my, I mean, I just got back from Baltimore. I love a weekend without a flight to me is a way easier weekend. I'm the same way. And it's funny because at the time they're listening to this, I will have just got back from there Baltimore. Back to back weeks. Not the best planning. You bringing anybody? I got Matt Wayne coming. Ooh, he just texted me. That's fun. Probably trying to figure out the meat situation. Oh, yeah. That's tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Heading down there. And then this weekend, uh, Atlanta Punchline. Friday, Saturday. Very oh, excited. Love Hot Lana. Let me tell you about Vancouver a little oh, bit. Oh, Coov my ass. So, lot going on there. Spiritual journey out there in Vancouver. So, I do San Francisco. I have the one night gig, Rob Mayu. You know Rob Mayu? I like Robbie. Yeah, good guy. Good guy. Tat it up. So, he's got the gig in Vancouver, and I've never gotten more messages, emails, tweets, texts, Instagram <laughs> messages than. This gig, it's at the Rickshaw Theater, which is right in the heart of East Hastings Street. Oh, boy. Which is... That's not lunch. It's like Skid Row, but it's Skid Town. Yeah. It's like a 12-block. It's insane. And everyone's messaging me being like, don't do this gig. Be careful. It's great. I mean, I got 300 messages. I should have done a, a, a montage. Wow. There's YouTube videos. Go to on YouTube and go East Hastings, tour of East Hastings Street. There's like 15 of them. There you go. And you'll see the rickshaw theater in there. I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It is the single craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so sad and strange. It's free drugs, free heroin, <laughs> free everything, I guess. They give them food and blankets. I don't know the solution. That sounds pretty good. Free drugs, free food, free blanket. Maybe I'll go. Well, I guess the idea is... 
they won't be robbing people because they're being uh, they're getting they have what they need. I guess I think I guess, but that never works out. People go, I want two blankets. Fuck you. Well, this is above my pay grade, but it was one of the saddest, craziest, and frankly scariest things I've ever seen. And I was nervous, so I expressed that. They gave me. I got to give a shout out to Jacob, the young comic, big ass dude. He came in and rode with me, big Jake, and he he gave me the the the, the service into the place because I'm like everyone's just like the thing of like oh they're fine they don't right, worry about it right. but I'm like but they're homeless crack addicts they're on drugs <laughs> they're unpredictable they're mentally unwell and I'm showing up with a a three hundred dollar Ted Baker jacket sure I would sure. take my money if I were them yeah I, I've thought about taking your money I mean you know so also hilarious to bring the kook phobic motherfucker of all time to Cookville. I mean, it's so funny that he picked you to go to this exact location. Well, I feel like, uh, you know, George, after watching Ronnie K, the prop comic, because <laughs> yeah, once you see Vancouver, New York is like Disney World. Really? I'm, like, I'm not scared of nothing after East Hastings. That shit is wild. That's so funny, because I think Vancouver, I think the seawall, I think the ocean, I think Asian people, a little weed, it's so clean, it's pretty. It's crazy. So let me, I, 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 I do San Francisco. I fly up there. The hotel, it's called uh, the Riviera on, uh, I forget the name of the street. I get dropped there, and on the way in, I, I check out the uh, reviews. Mm. And it's a lot of one star, Ooh. don't stay here, holy shit, this place sucks. But I'm like, ah, whatever, it's just a night, it's just a place to plop. Rob Mayo. So I get in there, and right away, I get dropped, and I look, and I'm like, this isn't looking great. Oh, boy. Not looking horrible. Nice neighborhood, but I'm like, eh, let me see, let me see. And I, I had to fly early, so I get in at like 10.30 a.m. Ah. They're not going to let me check in, of course. Ah, that's the worst. So, because it was either get in at 10 a.m. or 5 p.m. Ah. for a 7 o'clock show. You made the right choice. So, ah, oh, jeez, the watch. Oh, that's the time we got to go? It's all right. 5.02, we're good. It's broken. So... We go in there. I go into the hotel, and there's a guy. I don't know what he is, Eastern European. He's like, "Where's my cab?" Yeah, yes. I asked for a cab. Where's? The, did you call the cab? And it's like two young teenagers, Indian, and they're like, "Uh, but like American." They're like, "Yeah, we called the cab. He should be here." Mm. And the guy's like, "There's no cab. I, I got, I'm gonna miss my flight." And he's oh like, boy. "We called him. Don't worry." And then I literally hear the guy be like, "Just call him up again." Uh. And so I'm like, "This is weird." Then there's just like piles of suitcases in there. The lobby is like 10 feet wide. Yeah. And they have like behind the counter, there's like little boxes of cereal, those little boxes. Oh, I love those. And the lady's like, Do you guys have breakfast here? He's like, No, we got it right here. And it's just little boxes of Fruit Loops. Oh, boy. So you're like, I don't know about this. Then there's a fish tank, looks a little dirty. Oh, bad fish, dirty fish, white fish. And so this is going to upset you. So then I go, um, Hey, I know it's 10 a.m. I'm wondering when I can check in, if maybe there's a room ready. It's not under my name. It's under Rob's name. So uh, we can't figure out the name situation. Then he says, uh, okay, we found it. We found the thing. It's a $25 early entry Ah, oh, that's how they get you. And I go, so the room is ready? And he goes, well, it'll be ready in about an hour. Uh -huh. So I got to pay $25 to wait an hour. Yes, no then, good. Then he goes, there's also a $9 COVID fee. What is this, Spirit Airlines? Nine dollar. I go. What is it? What, what is that? At uh, first, I said this fucking country out loud, which maybe was too much because you got to wear your mask there still. Whoa! On the plane and everything. So I Brown go. Face. Nine dollar COVID fee. I go. What is that? And he goes. Well, it's we we clean the room extra with these chemicals. And I think that's criminal. Am I crazy? You can't add on stuff like that. Nine dollar COVID. So what if I don't want to pay the nine dollars? Can you not use the chemicals? Good point. And I'm paying for a clean room. Yeah. What, does I get COVID if you know, I don't give you the nine bucks? Right. And now if you get COVID, you should be able to sue them. I go, is this a national thing? They go, oh, no. Duh. And so <laughs> I go, so cereal. it's $25 for the early check-in, but I can't check in yet. And then it's a $9 COVID fee. And I go, is there a place to put my suitcase? And he goes, yeah, you can leave it right there. It's just out in the open. Ah. There's no bell man. Where do you find this fucking flop bucket? I don't know. <laughs> so I go, hold on one second. I'll be right back. I step over here. I look up hotels in Google Maps. The Westin is a six-minute walk on the water next to Stanley Park. Oh, uh, but what's the price? So I call him up. Well, yeah. I call him up and I go, "Let me ask you this: Do you have a room available right now? If I went there and checked in, could I get a room?" The lady's like, "We certainly do." And oh. I went, "I'll be right there." I hung uh -huh. up and I said, "See you later, my friends. Enjoy your nine dollars. Keep your nine dollars." I took my suitcase and I said, "Sayonara, a tata, a tatel." Good for you. Walked down to the Westin. 
Huge hotel, free bike rental. Whoa! Rented it, rode all around Stanley Park like we did 10 years ago. Whoa! Right on the water, checked in at 10.30 a.m., took a nap, hot lady there, big squishy bed, hot shower, steaming up. I felt like a million bucks. It cost about $5,000. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I just felt great. Did he help you fray the price of the wheelchair with the the, the Rob, babe? I don't don't know. I don't even know. I, I, I texted my manager. And wrote like, ah, see if we can get a buyout because I'm not using the room. But if not, I don't even care. Okay. And it was one of those things. I did well in San Fran. I was I did well in Vancouver. And you just you have this thing where you go. I've been doing comedy for 22 yes, years. Yes. I'm on four hours sleep. I want to take a nap and be in the park. That's not too much to ask, by the way. And this is what you have money for. You know, people say, exactly. hey, you got money. Well, what are you going to do? Save up? You can't take it with you. You're going to buy a pool or a jet? No, this is it. Well, that's the difference. It's like I, I want to. I can check in right. That's worth fifty thousand dollars to <laughs> right. me to lay in a bed right now. I'm exhausted, and to have a, a, a secure place because I hate that early. You watch my bag. I'll go eat while you have my bag for two hours. That yeah. bullshit. So, felt fantastic. The show is amazing. Filled with Tuesdays, big theater, just packed up there with the with the gays. No issues with the whatever. Good hang. Good hang. I like that, Rob. Good guy. Mayu and, Bad uh, and Jacob was great. And it How's was just the a great theater? time. Theater was cool. It was a, it's a rock and roll place. And they had uh, like Sam Coffey had been there and all these great band posters and everything. And it was just a great gig. I'm looking forward to Toronto, July 29th. Toronto, Paradise Love Theater. Love Toronto. Doesn't it feel good, though, that like a little thing of you're going to Kook Central the hotel sucks. You're in the middle of Vancouver. You're on the other side of the world in another country. And you're in the kook town, and the gays are out, and they know about the kooks. They're like, Joe's going to go here. We're going to go see him. He's probably nervous. They know everything about you. Isn't that fun? It was amazing. It was so fun. Everybody was so nice and kind. We have the best fans. And thanks to everyone on the Patreon, by the way, where Chuck is really wheeling oh, and dealing with yeah. that Patreon. He's a wizard. Grand. So we're, we're grateful to all of you. Did you bring that check, by the way? Oh, oh, it's on my counter. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'll Venmo you a nice chunk. To well, the, the, the I'm not maximum. worried about the chunks, but uh, I'll give you no chunks. chunks. We he's, got he's in Goonies chunk. Uh, but anyways, great time, great stuff. We gotta we gotta get out of here. You got a train to catch. Yeah, uh, this weekend I'm at Punchline Atlanta, June 24 and 25. The weekend after that is the movie uh, Beacon is sold out. You missed your chance Ooh, to see it in New York. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. But it is playing at Village East. Oof, that sounded a little wet. Yeah, not dry. It is playing at Village East Cinemas. Pack those out. It's a 120-seat theater. It's playing all day and all night, July 1st to July 7th. You can go get tickets now if you're in New York. And then there's still some tickets available for the Schubert Theater and the Vic wow. Theater in uh, Boston and Chicago. Louie and I will be there doing Q&A Ooh. after Ron Bennington as well, other cast. And then July 29th, Paradise Theater Toronto. Let's keep filling these up. I, I've been selling out some shows. It's been really exciting. And we're up wow. over a million on the special. Oh, my God. What a year, you fatty. You're killing it. So keep sharing that. And then July 5th and 6th, I'm going to be embedded in Whitefish. I think July 5th is the game. Man. If anyone's up in Montana, come by. Oh, boy, go see the guy uh, pitch and catch right up the ass. So uh, I can't follow that. That's a, that's a good couple months. Well, you got dates all over my ass. Come uh, on. Yeah, and pimples on mine. So I'm in uh, I'm marknormandycomma.com. I'm doing a lot of theater stuff. We got the Wilbur. We got the Neptune. We got Portland. We got Vancouver. We got Toronto. We're all over the place. Say hello. I'm doing the Fully Loaded with Bert coming up, I think, this weekend, depending on when this comes out. And, uh, yeah, yeah, check out my special, my stuff, the pod, the Patreon. Get on there. And uh, I'm going to the Village East. I'm going to go see the movie there. I'll tell you that right now. I'll bring the lady. Please do. I think uh, Ari's putting together a big group. Ooh. So, yeah, you know, get a, get a group to gaze together. we got to sell it because it's independent. It's so hard to get this fucking movie in theaters. Yeah. So we want to see the people show up, go there. Yes. Now, uh, you know what I just realized? You make some money off the theater movies. You don't have to give your agent that. Or do you? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think I we're going to think... be making any money off. It. Oh, I think okay. The ticket. I think the theater gets like half. They then get there's those, like another chunk. fee, and that you know. Hey, you sell some Mike and Ike's. So yeah, knows? we're hoping to make some money streaming, and it will be streaming down the road. But 
Go support it live in the cinema. Go support, and uh, I can't wait to see it. Looks like a hell of a picture, and uh, yeah. we're we're really doing it. So <laughs> can't wait for the reviews. Try it's to be okay. nice. It's okay. Oh boy, Yay. there you go. Low expectations. We had fun. Move. Is what we did. We that's had a good time making what it's it. It's all about. It's all about Oof. having fun. Uh, all right, folks. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Brian. You're the man. Sweet Appreciate Brian. you coming in and Way go enjoy the summer. You only got five left, everybody. Yeah. Sweep it up. No